Well, you did it, didn't you? You jumped right on that roller coaster. You let it take you straight to crazy town. You let your emotions get the best of you. It's been a wild week. All right, let's talk about it. Well, before we get started on all the crazy happenings that's been going on with Razorback Sports, we got to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. Always tune in on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe or follow both of those pages. Hit the notifications bell on YouTube so you're alerted anytime we upload new videos. Also available on Apple Podcasts. Throw us that five-star review. Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. Hog Sports is just $1 right now for your first month. All right. I'm Trey Biddy. for those of you who don't know publisher of hogsports.com and it has been a wild week for Razorback Sports and what we've kind of forgotten about the transfer portal is it giveth and it taketh away. Arkansas has had some good days obviously Landon Jackson, Jaden Hazelwood they've had some bad days and even good days last year with Arkansas's entire starting defensive line which by the way all entered the transfer portal after spring drills last year. So Arkansas will have its day again. Will they lose more transfers? Yes. There are going to be more players that transfer out. Jalen Williams just transferred out, as expected. He didn't play a lot last year or at all. But Arkansas is also going to have their day again. So I know yesterday and the day before, it felt like Arkansas was taking it on the chin, and they did. But what's funny is, like, it's not funny because the state of college football is, is not funny right now. But the last thing I read on a Razor's Edge message board for Joe Fouché in her transfer portal was somebody mocking Ole Miss for losing a bunch of players. And this is what typically happens. This is what happens after the bowl game, the week after a bowl game. It's just more chaotic now because the free and clear transfer and all the other stuff that's going on with college football. But the one rule, the one rule that stands out to me is the big reason. It's not the NIL stuff. It's that maybe in conjunction with some stuff, but the one rule is that free and clear transfer, that you can leave and be eligible right away. And I'm not saying that it's fair to have a rule there, but I also know that if you submit a waiver and you have a legitimate reason for transferring, then usually that's going to be accepted by the NCAA. 65% of the time, transfer waivers are accepted. So, it's a pretty high number, and usually the legitimate ones are accepted. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not going to be fair to everybody, and everybody can say, you know, these coaches. And by the way, Josh Pate has a fantastic take on this, by the way, and he's talking about the free market. And I know we're all capitalists. We believe in the free market. But the best line he said was – it's late kick Josh, by the way, for those who don't watch him, National College Football Show. But the best line he said, the free market isn't your wallet's poking out of your pants and somebody goes and grabs your wallet and says it's mine now. And he also brings up the topic, which we've talked about a little bit on drive time. I don't know if I've talked about it on here, but the idea that coaches can just move free and clear place to place because they can't. And he's absolutely right on that. There is reimbursement. It may not be through the coach, but the school that he's going to is paying back money for everything that that school has invested in that coach. They're paying back millions of dollars to get that coach in the buyout. So somebody's paying for something. With these players leaving and stuff, there's no, there's no reimbursement. There's no buyout. Players use the school, school uses the players, and then they can just leave free and clear. And I'm not 100% on board with that, and it doesn't apply to the recent situation, the recent things that have happened. But I've, I've said that when you sign a national letter of intent, I think it locks you in for two years. you got to give it the old college try for a couple years. If things aren't working out after that, then, you know, the coach is probably fine with you transferring and, and vice versa. But also, that doesn't, like, answer the problems that, you know, we see today with the transfer portal and stuff. And I'm, I'm all about, you know, if you lose a coach, if you have a loved one that's sick, or, you know, if you're the victim of, like, a hate crime or something like that, you know, things like that happen. And, yeah, you should be allowed to leave that school in those circumstances. Those are unique circumstances. That's why the waiver was put in the first place. Those are just a few of my thoughts on on where we are in college football right now. I'm not in love with the situation. I also know that, you know what? Everything's not fair, and we as try as hard as we try to make things fair, it becomes unfair for other people all the time. I mean, look at I'm not going to talk politics here, but you know, you have the legislative branch, the executive branch, the judicial branch, and they're all treated differently. Why aren't they treated the same? Why is a president not appointed for life like a, a Supreme Court judge? Because they're not. Why are employees not treated the same as a business owner? I'm a business owner. I know that when when hope not but if this thing goes upside down and bankruptcy who, who's feeling the brunt of that who's taking on the risk business owners are 
not the employees. It's different. And I know that a coach, when a coach is fired, and I know he's making millions of dollars, he should be fine and happy, but I also know when he's fired, it's in disgrace. He's mocked the rest of his life by that entire fan base. He takes on the brunt of it. It's different, and we talk about coaches moving free and clear. What what coaches are these? I mean, who are, who are the coaches that are moving free and clear? It's a select group, and if that job is even open, even if a job is open, Oklahoma guy, Notre Dame guy, Louisiana guy. I mean, that's it's coaches moving from lower level schools, group of five schools to power five schools. You know, getting their big opportunity, or it's coaches. Uh, you know, maybe feeling that their welcome might be a little bit worn out, like maybe Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly is as good a coach as he is, as strong a record as he is. One more bad season. He had one bad season a few years ago, and they were ready to get him out of there. I mean, he barely hung on. One more bad season, he would have been out. It's a select group of coaches that are that are even able to do that, and it's not happening with most. Most coaches aren't able to do something like that. So that comparison, you know, just kind of piggybacking a little bit on what Josh Pate said, I think makes all the sense in the world. Now, with Arkansas' situation, there's so much stuff out there going on about Sam Carter, okay? And Joe, Fou- uh, Joe Fouché, uh, Jalen Catalan got on Instagram Live last night. Joe Fouché was one of his guests that he had on there for a minute. Just kind of popped in real quick. But what he said and what one person close to one of the transfers out has told me also was this didn't have anything to do with Sam Carter. In fact, just to kind of go over – a little bit of what Jalen Catalan said. Just know I wouldn't I wouldn't have come back if Coach Carter wasn't a good coach. He also said he coaches us. We're grown men. He's going to coach us hard. That's my boy for life, though. Okay? This is from Alyssa Orange at KNWA who spoke to one of the parents of a, of a Razorback defensive back. He treats them all the same. They're used to being treated differently. The last coaching staff treated us treated the ones like gods on a pedestal and only spoke to the ones in the film room, now they are treated equally. Now, a few other things that Catalan went on to say, and I also want to mention this too, because Catalan also said when he's talking about Greg Brooks and he's talking about Joe Fouché that, you know, they left because of business decisions, okay? And I think a lot of people take that and mean, you know, that means they're getting paid or something. They're they're leaving for an NIL or something. And I'm not speaking on their case or anything, but players say that all the time. Players say business decision, you know, and it really just means, you know, they're going on to find a different situation or, you know, we, we have an idea. Okay. These are two guys starting on a nine and four SEC team that had their best defensive year in several years. Right. So we're looking at that and saying, wow, you know, we've got a great plan for this guy. We got his future lined out. This is where, this is why it's a great situation for him, but we don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes. We don't know why they may be leaving. What I do know is there are some players that Sam Carter rubs the wrong way, you know, just from sources I've talked to. He coaches them hard. But not everybody feels that way. And I don't think that's the case with these guys leaving. And I don't think, uh, you know, it's, there's so much stuff that's been going around. It's just, it's just it, it got a little ridiculous, all the way to the point of K.J. Jefferson might leave, to which Jalen Catalan said, uh, nah, he's staying with a, like a real confused look on his face. Catalan staying. This is all according to Catalan. Catalan staying. Miles Slusher staying. Hudson Clark staying. Carter isn't the reason everyone's leaving. Jefferson's staying. Odom's staying. Browse is staying. He thinks. And, you know, that might be something to talk about a little bit too because he's being courted by Miami, probably others. I think Miami's got a few guys in mind. Kendall Browse is probably way up the top of that list. But it seems to be, feel like maybe maybe he is going to end up staying. Um, he also said Traylon Burks would beat him in a fight, though he'd get his rounds in. He wouldn't elaborate on anything else with uh, with the players that are leaving. But I'll say this: Arkansas has, I think, they're up to 15 now. As soon as as soon as uh, Malik Hornsby becomes official, and with Malik, he just said, you know, Malik is trying to find the best situation for him. He's trying to find, and I think we all look at that too and say, hey, this is a great situation, Malik. You know. KJ probably be around another year. That's kind of what he indicated in the bowl game. He feels like he needs another year of development. And you've got three more years at Arkansas. Be the starting quarterback like that. But we're not in these players' head. We're not in their situation. We don't know everything that's going on exactly. But I do know this. Arkansas will give some in the transfer portal just like everybody is. This is happening everywhere. It was just funny. It was just funny until the last couple of days because it was happening to everybody else and not Arkansas. But this is how it's going to go. 
and there's not going to be the last transfer, and it's not going to be the, the only thing that happens. There's going to be good days for Arkansas again. There's going to be good days. Greg Brooks is a good player. Joe Fouché is a good player. There's other good players out there. It's just going to – it's not the same. I don't like I don't like it. I don't like the way that college football is right now with, with players transferring like that. But I also understand, like, if I'm going to sit here and say it's got to be free for the players, you know, if I'm going to support player rights, then it kind of makes me feel hypocritical to say, you know, I, I feel like I'm saying two different things here. Because I love college football, and I've said this before, and I have saw this coming a mile away. I saw this coming a mile away for years because – the NCAA kept changing stuff. Some of it they were forced to change, the NIL stuff. But they kept changing stuff so quickly, and they didn't have a control group to say, hey, mm, maybe we messed up on this. They just kept adding stuff. You know, the four-game redshirt rule, which I was supportive of. But it ended up players, just older players, just started using the four-game redshirt rule to redshirt themselves and say, I'm entering the transfer portal, quit on their team midseason. I don't like that. Nobody. I don't like the optics of that. Fans don't like that. And that's some of the areas that you have to protect. You have to protect the player interest. You have to. You have to protect the coaches, the staff, support staff, ADs, all of that stuff, administration. Okay? It's kind of like the three branches of government. you got to support the fans. And by fans, I also mean the integrity of the game. Okay? How they view the game. Do they view the game as integrity? Do they view the game as just buying players? If they, as that's how they view the game, then they're going to lose interest. If they don't view the game as, I want to come to Fayetteville, Arkansas, because it's beautiful, it's a great place, the weather's nice, you get all four seasons, fantastic facilities, great stadium, SEC, the fans, the support, all of those things. If they don't view it as that, if they view it, well, I'm going to go to Arkansas because they're going to give me $50,000. And somewhere else can't afford to do that. Hmm. Mm, yeah. I don't like that either. But that's where things are right now in college football. Hey, Joe Fouché and Greg Brooks gave a lot to Arkansas. So did Miles. So did uh, 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 Malik Hornsby. Malik Hornsby gave a lot to Arkansas. Now, I will say this again. As soon as Hornsby enters the portal, which he said he's doing yesterday, that'll be 15. That's an SEC lead for Arkansas. I don't wish all those guys the best. I think we all do. But none of those guys were playing. Vito Calvaruso, maybe he's a, he's a loss too, you know. But none of those guys were really playing except for Brooks. Hornsby is a guy that we, you know, had a future lined, lined out for him. Fouché. So it's not the end of the world. It may have felt like it this past week, but it's not. There will be bright days again for Arkansas football, okay? But some people need to step off the ledge a little bit, get off that crazy train. And I know I'm right there with you, pissed, upset, confused. I get it. Trust me, I'm right there with you. But people are creating all kinds of narratives and just going with it. There's a Twitter mob, all these kinds of things. Again, I'm not saying with Sam Carter that he doesn't rub some people the wrong way. I mean, he doesn't coach them hard. But I'm also saying I've talked to people who said that's not the reason. And I've, here's Jalen Catalan right here. Did I read everything that Jalen Catalan said? Let me read his quotes. I read his first quote, didn't I? I read Alyssa Orange's quote. So. What else do I want to talk about? If y'all haven't seen Josh Pate's deal, I'll try to link it in here. It's fantastic. I'll link it on uh, on the YouTube video. This has also been going on for college basketball for years, even with just the sit one before the, the free and clear transfer. It's been going on for years in college basketball. We've been watching guys transfer. 40% of your roster, I mean, was transferring before this latest thing happened. Look at Arkansas's basketball roster last year. Look at it this year. The difference is we were talking about 13 players, not 85. Hornsby's official, by the way. That just happened. Just popped up. Hornsby officially in the transfer portal now. But we're talking about 85 players, not 13. So that's just a huge, huge number. It just feels more chaotic. And it happens with football kind of all at once, like right after that bowl game. You know, players go home, think about their situation a little bit. 
So that's one reason I think it feels so chaotic right now. And it'll tone down, and there'll be some more that come out after spring football. But it's going to tone down here in a little bit. Hopefully there's some good news with Bumper Pool. He's supposed to announce today. He hasn't yet at the time that this is recorded. You may be watching this, and he's already decided. And when you get 105, and like I know we have all this idea of how you know the brotherhood and the bond and with everybody should be, but you're talking about 105 people, 105 players, 10 coaches, ton of staff. Not everybody's going to get along. They're just not. Some people don't like me. I know that. <laughs> I'm a hard person sometimes to get along with. I like things to be. Those who know me are probably laughing right now, but I like things a certain way. Okay, and sometimes people don't like that. People know what to expect from me, and I think they know what to expect from Sam Carter uh, also. I, I mentioned this, too, in a post I made on the Razor's Edge forum, but this, I think, is, is significant also. This The last two recruiting classes that Sam Pittman, and I'll say this about Sam Pittman, too. When Chad Morse was here for two years, right from the get-go, I started hearing all kinds of crap out of that locker room. All kinds of stuff. So-and-so doesn't like so-and-so. I don't like him. He doesn't like me. Offense doesn't like the defense. These coaches don't like those coaches. Every level. That stopped. That literally stopped. And I don't know if because Sam Pittman put the kibosh on everybody getting stuff out or what, but I, just, I, just, I, just, I didn't hear all this drama stuff anymore. It stopped happening. This has been like the first thing that's happened in a long time. But these last two recruiting classes they've had, the thing that is unique to me about this is out of every single one of them, they haven't had a single decommit. Now, we don't know what's going to happen with Miles Rouser, if he's going to sign or not. But out of two recruiting classes, two full classes that Sam Pittman has put together, no one has decommitted from him. Nobody. And that tells me they're going after guys, do you want to be at Arkansas? Is this where you want to be? You want to be a part of this program. And they're still going to have players from these classes transfer out. It's going to happen. They will have players leave. But maybe it's a situation where they feel like they got no choice to leave versus wanting to leave. Okay? Keep those things in mind. Remember, these are young men, and we don't know everything that's going on. And it sucks, I know. The optics of it sucks. I hated when Mike Woods left. I thought on the surface he made a bad decision. I still think that. I'm not so sure that these guys made the right decision, but I don't know everything that's going on. I do know that they're going to find good options because they're good players. I do know that's going to happen. But also know Landon Jackson was a big-time get for Arkansas. Jaden Hazelwood was a big-time get for Arkansas. I give a shout-out to Hogwild79 also because I thought he made a great point also um, on, on players in the transfer portal because usually it's not players that were like, you know, four- or five-star recruits that weren't playing at other schools and are, have entered the transfer portal. Usually it's guys that, like, are moving because of a coaching change or, you know, guys that just want to find another option, but they were playing at the other school they were at. Or guys like a John Ridgeway who's transferring up from a level down. You know, those are usually the guys, whether they're a two-star or three-star or whatever, those are the guys that are making an impact. Look at Arkansas's defensive line last year. I keep bringing that up. But there's one two-star and two three-stars that started for Arkansas's defensive line. Again, a group that entered the transfer portal after spring drills. There's still going to be a lot going on in the portal after the spring. There's going to be give and take. You're going to lose some guys you didn't want to lose. You dance with the devil. Is that an appropriate analogy? Where are we at? What do I want to go to next? I'm sure we've got questions. Let's run them down real quick. So Hornsby's officially in. Jalen Williams, defensive tackle, just recently entered the portal. Jalen did not play last year uh, after coming in from junior college. Greg Brooks, Jr., Joe Fouché, Devin Bush. Devin Bush is another guy that, you know, he's second team, hadn't really cracked through yet, maybe just looking for another opportunity. These are three New Orleans guys. 
three Louisiana guys, I should say, not all New Orleans. Nick Turner. Nick Turner never had cracked through. Kendall Catalan. Ray Curry Jr. Ray Curry probably, you know, out of that group of offensive linemen that came in, he was probably a little bit below them in terms of, like, pushing through to play in time. Darren Turner, Jermaine Hamilton Jordan, JT Towers, Andy Boykin. Those are the guys that have left Arkansas. It's a, it's a leading number. I mean, but you also have to consider Arkansas had a lot of players come back. Think about all the players that came back last year that wanted to be a part of what Arkansas had going on. All right, players are leaving for different reasons. Landon Jackson's coming in. Jaden Hay. Oh, I also mentioned, uh, forgot to mention Vito Calvaruso, Solomon Wright, and Josh Oglesby are also others that have left. But Landon Jackson, Jaden Hazelwood, those are two really nice gets. Without this portal situation the way it is, you don't get immediate help at wide receiver. You don't get immediate help at wide receiver with Jaden Hazelwood. You don't get immediate help on the defensive line. Last year's defensive line isn't happening. I guess it could have. COVID year, grad transfers, never mind, scratch that. It would have, it could have happened <laughs> because of the grad transfer rule. Danny West has a breakdown on the big red transfer board. I bet it has changed a lot this week because it's happening everywhere. Again, this is not just at Arkansas. It's everywhere. And people are thinking the sky is falling, Arkansas can't recover. Everybody's dealing with it. Like I said, people were laughing about what was going on at Ole Miss right before this. Look how hard LSU has been hit. Now they've had coaching change, but, man, they've got hit. And they'll find some answers out there in the transfer portal. Look at Oklahoma. Oklahoma, wow. Wow. I mean, losing starting quarterbacks, losing backup quarterbacks that started before one wide receiver after another. But they got a guy from UCF. It's just the way it's going to be. A lot of junior days coming up. Danny West breaks all that stuff down on junior days like the next three weekends, I think. Three weekends straight later this month, excuse me. But a lot of really good prospects coming in. Arkansas has – I think they're, they're somewhere around top ten. I think maybe number eight nationally in the 2023 recruiting class right now. Good start. Good start to 2023. Arkansas plays Texas A&M. Hell, we hadn't even got into basketball, but, man, I thought I was going to fall in love with this team, and I'm so frustrated by them. And I bet it's, as I said on drive time yesterday, it's about a pinky's worth about what Eric Musselman feels right now. They just It just hasn't come together yet. There's questions about point guard, leadership, all of those things. It just, the puzzle just hasn't come together. There's all these pieces everywhere. It just hasn't fit. And Vanderbilt gave Arkansas – Every opportunity. And they tried to take it. It just didn't happen. Shot block, missed free throw, a steal at the end of the game. I mean, there's all kinds of things, that, you know, them missing free throws. There's all kinds of things that, like, felt like both teams were trying to give the other team an opportunity to win the game. And Arkansas just couldn't take it. And that was what was probably most frustrating. Things can still turn around. It doesn't feel like it's going to be like it did. I mean, we're a far cry from top ten, right? Y'all tune in to Curtis Wilkerson for his takes on that. He does a fantastic job. I'm going to turn it over some questions. This is a – I usually don't do the show on Friday, but I just felt like there was a need to talk about some of the stuff that's going on because there's just so much stuff out there. People's feelings are hurt. Got your dealings hurt, I understand. People are pissed. Bright day still ahead. Trust me, says Maurice Norman. Doug Woodruff says Fayetteville is consistently ranked as the best college town in the SEC. Absolutely is. That is a U.S. News and World Report fact. One of the best places to live in the entire country. Always in the top five. It's a great place to be. It really is. Team Eskew says, I think it's natural for fans of a team to feel a sense of betrayal when a player you know, leaves via the transfer portal. It's a tough feeling. You're absolutely right. I mean, it is like you can't understand. It's like – a breakup, you know. Why would somebody leave? I thought everything was going so well. But we certainly have no problem taking guys in. It's absolutely right, Tim. Jay Biggs says, I'm not angry. I just hope there's a plan in place and a little concern. I mean, there's going to be options out there. Like you said, 
What we talk about Fayetteville just a minute ago? It's in the SEC. They just won nine games. Hell, they can recruit finally off a winning record for the first time in years. They can recruit off a winning record for the first time in years. And that really impact, you know, impacts the class ahead, not so much the 2022 class, but it will impact the transfer portal also. But they can recruit off a winning record in Fayetteville. U.S. News & World Report, best place to live in the SEC. Great facilities. As I've said before, nobody's saying like, man, Arkansas needs a new training room. They need a new um, student athlete success center. You know, they need – it's all there. It's finished. Like they may upgrade stuff throughout the years, add window dressing stuff, but it's there. Everything is there that you need to succeed on an extremely high level, and it's better than some NFL teams have. I mean, it's it's all there. A coach that people rally around that get they can get behind. People love Sam Pittman. I look at all sports like this. Oh, I missed you, man. It rolled off. And we can talk about NIL stuff too. I'm not so sure that this is actually the root of the cause. You know, we talked about the explanation of what business decision means sometimes. It doesn't always mean that somebody's getting paid to go somewhere. Now, stuff like that may happen down the road. You may get an NIL deal. You may see a better opportunity, but that I don't know that that's what's happening here. When Jalen Catalan says business decision, you know, somebody feels like there's it's a time to move on. There's a, maybe a different opportunity out there for them. Maybe they want to get closer to home. Who knows? But a business decision doesn't mean to be taken like literally like that. Bryce, Stub- Bryce Stubbs says, let's celebrate the rebirth on the hill and Sam Pittman. He's staring. He's stirring the pot. Right. Okay. Turn that jukebox. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, like, you know what this reminds me of a little bit? And it doesn't, it's kind of funny because it doesn't have anything, it doesn't relate really. But back, what was year was that when Houston up was being quartered by Nebraska? That was like 2004, 2003. It was the year that Arkansas beat Missouri in the Independence. Was it the Independence Bowl? I can't hardly remember. It's been a while now. But uh, Arkansas just beat Missouri in the bowl game. And Houston Nutt comes to the field, off the field for the sideline reporter. And I think the last thing she says to him, she goes, um, she asked him about the, the Nebraska job and his interest in the Nebraska job. He's been contacted by Nebraska. And Houston says, no comment, and darts off. And we're all just like, what the hell? Like, we didn't even get to enjoy the win. Now we're worried about the coach leaving for Nebraska. And I know Houston Nutt was run off later on in his career. But at the time – and people were frustrated with things here and there, like wanting him to get an offensive coordinator. But nobody wants the coach to leave on their own terms. Like, we'll get rid of you. We'll move on past you. But we're not going to let you leave. And that's the, it was the feeling. It was like immediate. And that's kind of how this feels. Like, Arkansas just came off of a 9-4 and four season, their best season in a decade, with a lot of guys that we're upset about right now playing a big role in that. Okay? Keep that in mind. They gave a lot. Okay? But it just feels like – and this is the kind of stuff that happens after, the week after bowl games. Players go home, you know, they make decisions and stuff, and now it's a free and clear transfer. That's the number one rule, guys. And we can talk about the NIL stuff, and Arkansas needs to get, you know, K.J. Jefferson needs more NIL deals. And I would say, you know, like if you're a Razorback fan, you're like, well, I can't – you know, I, I, I'm not going to endorse an athlete, but, you know – like, are you using the the people that are sponsoring these guys? <laughs> I mean, like, if you want to, if like you're asking, like, how can I do my part and stuff? Are you using the law firm, you know, that's sponsoring a certain player? Or are you, you using the car dealership or the restaurant? You going to that restaurant? You ordering the meal that's sponsored by that player? All right. Yeah, you know, Hornsby, Mike, Metheny, Hornsby put on some great film for somebody in that bowl game. And, you know, what you see with Hornsby is just breathtaking speed. And, you you know, if – and I, I, don't, I don't think that the issue is, as Kyle Edie is saying here, the issue isn't whether or not Hornsby is accurate as a passer or if he can throw because he can do those things. The issue is knowing where to go with the ball. That, to me, is the biggest issue with Hornsby. And once that light goes on, if it goes on, 
watch out because, man, I see a Nick Marshall, Pat White type of player developing there. If he ever gets to where he knows to go with the ball, and the thing with those guys, especially Nick Marshall, because Nick Marshall wasn't a really good passer, but he was so scary. He was so scary with his legs that everybody had to respect it and it opened up so much in the passing game for him. He threw for 2,500 yards one year, almost 2,000 in the other year when they went all the way to the national championship game. Donnie A. Butt says, thank you, Trey, for doing this show to calm things down. Well, I wasn't coming on here to calm things down. I'm just giving my opinion and based on, you know, an informed opinion. I talk to a lot of people, you know, and um, I see a lot of stuff out there. What I always try to do is report what I know, okay? And I don't like speculating. I like to report what I know for sure. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to have fun with speculating. I, I get that. But I'm going to make sure everybody knows that it's just speculation, you know, and, and not something I know or have hard facts on. Like you're in coaching searches. You know, coaching searches, everybody tries to take themselves so seriously. I want to report a certain information. We put a rumor, med th- a rumor mill thread up there. And I just put everything because, yeah, I'm a reporter, but it's also entertainment, isn't it? Don't you want to have fun? Let's have fun with it. You know, that's what this is all about. If it's not fun, what are you doing? If it's not fun or informative, what are you doing? Elder Reginald Allen said, hey, Trey, so will this be a rebuild for Sam Pittman? I've broken down. I've already broken down my four deep depth chart. You need a VIP subscription at Hog Sports to read it. It's a dollar right now, by the way. It's a crazy time. You might want to join in. But, um, I've broken down my four deep depth chart. They have work to do where they did not have work to do previously. A nickelback, a safety. Those weren't, those weren't concerns earlier. John Ridgway. I mean, if you listen to the show at all, you knew he was, he was moving on. Um, and not really any other options to move on. I mean, like, uh, you know, bumper pool has the option to move on. Obviously Jalen Callon had the option to move on, uh, and go to the NFL. But aside from that, you know, so, what do they have to figure out on defense? First of all, offense looks pretty well intact. I don't know that they're going to go out and like hire, you know, try to find a bunch of people other than needing a quarterback. And they're not going to probably find one, I don't think, in this class, unless it's like a, you know, a true freshman last year who wants to join in and say, oh, you know, KJ maybe got another year. I could come in, learn, you know, so on and so forth. But they only have two healthy quarterbacks, period to go through spring ball. And I've seen people, like, we had a guy who was like, you know, how many quarterbacks do you need? Well, you, you know, you'd like to have four, five quarterbacks on your roster, scholarship guys, you know, kind of one in each class would be ideal. That's impossible to do now. So, but ideally, you know, that's how you'd like to have it. But, um, you know, there are 85 players on a roster, 105 players, 85 on scholarship. So, and there was more last year. So you can afford to have more quarterbacks. But you have to have – it's not just about who's playing in the game. You have to have somebody run the scout team. You need a couple of guys to run your scout team. And Cade Renfro's on the roster, and he's a scholarship-type talent who wasn't on scholarship. I think the plans probably put him on scholarship. Uh, but he tore his ACL, and that's going to follow him into next season since it happened so late. So it's unfortunate. But they're going to have to find an answer there. You know, and They've got some other young defensive backs – you know, there's been some concern over Jaden Johnson because there's a cryptic tweak, but I haven't seen anything on Jaden Johnson yet. But uh, they've got some young defensive backs they really like. Ja'Cory Turner this a guy that I like. Jaden Johnson I like. Obviously, Jalen Catalan is, is returning. Malik Chavis, Simeon Blair's back. You know, they've got some bodies there. I don't know that they need to just, like, rush out and go get a guy at, at, at safety or nickel so much as – I still think they need some help at cornerback. You know, I think they have good players. I think Hudson Clark's probably the best returning cornerback that they have. You know, Ladarius Bishop is obviously an experienced guy. Kari Johnson is a guy that they felt was really coming on. But I think that they could use some help out in the in, in the transfer portal, you know. You get some more competition there. Uh, get a guy that you think could help you. So, um, linebacker, obviously. Uh, you know, I feel like Bumper's going to announce that he's coming back, but – we don't know 100%. But even if he doesn't come back, I still think they could use some help at linebacker. Just the numbers aren't aren't quite good enough. Defensive line, obviously, you could still use some help, even though you got Landon Jackson, who was a big get. Casey Rowland says, I don't understand the NIL deal. Can you break it down, Barney style, for me? So the NIL 
is a way for student athletes or players, some people, Josh Pate calls them players now, they're professionals, which there does need to be something that happens, some kind of contract deal. Whether it means playing the players, just paying the players, moving to paying players to come to campus so you can have some kind of contract because even the AAA at Arkansas has more control over players where they go than the NCAA. The NFL does because they have contracts. And there's reimbursements and stuff for players moving and trades and stuff like that. You know, you get paid back. If you don't in college football, they just leave. It's tough. But the NIL deal is basically a, you know, a charity as, as some things have started out. You know, kind of some some fan bases, alumni bases, whatever you want to call them, have started up charities where they have the student athletes. In Texas situation, they have offensive linemen, up to 16 offensive linemen, get $50,000 going to Texas. That's about how many offensive linemen a team covers on scho- uh, carries on scholarship. Uh, they get $50,000 each to be the face of that charity. So there are different ways to do it. Like, you know, Instagram, you can make money as being a influencer, you know, on Instagram or TikTok or wherever else the hell they do those things. I always skip through them. <laughs> um, you can uh, make money from like just being a regular um, face of a, of a company. Uh, Jalen Catalan does one for a law firm. Um, DC, uh, Tony did uh, something for a restaurant. You know, uh, people do things for, I've seen uh, a couple people do for a retainer company, Cam Little and KJ Jefferson. I think that's the only one that KJ Jefferson has. And that brings up another point. Where's Arkansas in the NIL game right now? Are they behind a little bit? KJ Jefferson's got a retainer. And that's great, but that's that's his deal. Starting quarterback at Arkansas. You know, there's a lot of restaurants. Traylon Burks had several. They had, you know, real estate companies. Um, different things like that can endorse players just like they do professional athletes. So that's what name, image, and likeness means. The main thing I think we're all excited about, and are we willing to trade this for NCAA football? Is that going to come out next year? Hope so. But I think, you know, Josh Pate has a good point too. Like regulation is coming. It has to. There has to be a checks and balances. There has to. Because, you know, this the transfer for free and clear stuff. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And, again, I said you have to, integ- to protect the integrity of the game, the game, the way the game feels. And that's the biggest problem It's the free and clear transfer. And I'm all for fairness. I would love somebody to explain to me how to make it fair because the NCAA is not fair right now. It's never going to be fair as much as you try to make it. The NFL isn't fair. It's fairer than it used to be for players, but it's not fair. You get locked in. You can get – I can put a franchise tag on you and make you stay. If I draft you in the first round, I can extend your contract a year and pay you an average of the top players at your position, even though you may deserve more. It's not all going to be fair. Do we need some local business or even Walmart or J.B. Hunt to step in on NIL? Here's the thing. I don't know that a multi-billion dollar company is going to put their face and their name their name behind, you know, a student athlete that hasn't really developed a reputation yet, if that makes sense. You know, is that who Walmart's going to put their name behind? Now, maybe – you circumvent that kind of, some kind of other way through some other company or some, you know, charity event or charity uh, deal, something like that, and they donate through that so they're not necessarily the face. But I can't make the decisions for these companies. I'm just saying, like, you know, Arkansas feels – it feels like maybe they're not – and the, the main thing, I mean, you look at your quarterback, you know, K.J. Jefferson, one deal. Look at the D.C. He blitzed a lot in the bowl, just to advertise for another coaching job. We haven't blitzed like that all year. They blitz more. I don't know about that, though. I mean, at least according to Jalen Gatalon, I think Browse will leave and Loggins will be the next O.C. I mean, I could see that happening at some point. We'll watch this Miami situation. I think that's the key situation to watch right now because from everybody I've talked to in Miami, it feels like, you know, he is a prime candidate there, but they also don't feel certain at all that it's that it would be Browse. So I wouldn't get super comfortable yet until either an announcement is made on his contract or 
Miami makes a hire. But I think that either way, it's going to happen pretty soon here. And I wouldn't expect anything like on Sam Pittman's contract, which is, you know, in the works right now, to happen until the new cycle maybe gets a little smoother. You know what I mean? Because it feels a little negative right now. Get a little better news cycle coming. Bumper pool's about to decide. Maybe that's good news. Timothy Wiseant says, Trey, do you think Sam will stick with his no return policy from the portal? I think the three Louisiana DBs want to go home to LSU. Don't sleep on Coley, y'all. Watching in the San Francisco Bay Area. Great stuff. Appreciate you watching, man. Well, Jalen St. John entered the portal for a moment and came back out of it, so I don't know. I think it just depends on the situation. I mean, here's the thing, too. Like, these guys aren't all up at the University of Arkansas, so it's just not like they're walking around, you know, training and stuff. They're all home right now. School doesn't start back until, like, the 17th. I think that's Martin Luther King Day. By the way, speaking of great African Americans, Sidney Poitier died. What a life. Trailblazer. Died today. 92, I think. Yep, Renfro tore his ACL. They had a scrimmage in the bowl practices with the young guys, and uh, he tore his ACL. Had a back itch today. What are the scholarship numbers looking like with the transfers? I've got to go back in on that. Last I looked, it was 81, not including Rouser, not including Renfro if he went on scholarship, not including uh, the possible guys that could come back as super seniors. Um, it was 80, and that does include all of these latest ones, Jalen Williams, uh, Hornsby, Brooks, Slu uh, I keep saying that. He's not. Um, Fouché. We only have KJ and Coley for quarterback, no recruit in 2022. That's right. But, again, there's a portal out there. The portal giveth and the portal taketh away. How many of these transfer scholarships can we replace? Seven is the answer on that. They'll be fine. They'll be fine from a number. So it'll, it'll just work out. There's also, you know, like we talk about, you know, they're full technically on 21, I think, um, signees. And they may add one depending on what happens with browser uh, on high school guys because they borrowed ahead from this class. Guys like Trey Williams and um, Warren Thompson is another one that they borrowed ahead. Now, the thing with – like a guy like Warren Thompson, for example, the reason they can count him ahead, there's certain qualifications you have to meet. You have to you have to be an unrecruited student athlete. So what's an unrecruited? That means the coach doesn't go do in-home visits with you, and you don't take official visits to the school. Okay, that's what unrecruited means. So yeah, they may only end up with I think 28 total is what Sam said. So I guess maybe not 21 and eight or 21 and seven, but yeah, 21 and seven. So. They may only end up with 28 total based on the seven and the ones that they can bring in from high school ranks. But there could be players that maybe join the team in a walk-on role like Warren Thompson did who end up going on scholarship. You understand what I mean? That's, that's how that loop – what's the word I'm looking for? Loophole. That's how that, that's how that works. The, it's called blue shirting. Push them ahead to the next year. Casey Husky says, anybody you see transferring out? As I said before, Andrew Ellis, by the way, if you're not following Andrew Ellis, you, you probably know who Andrew Ellis is because he's written all these portal stories. All 14 of them have been written by Andrew Ellis, who's our new guy at Hog Sports. But um, we have some what we call shells, and shells are stories that we have ready just in case someone transfers. So there are other guys that we, you know, like Malik Hornsby transferred. And that story was out in three minutes. Andrew Ellis can't type a whole story in three minutes. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, we have shells ready for just in case other people transfer out. Not everybody, no shockers, just guys that you might think, you know, maybe didn't play a whole lot, maybe he's been there a couple years, you know, you could see it. Need LBs, yep, they need to hit some LBs. Chase Lowry, I like Chase Lowry. I think he maybe has a, have a future. Good point, Marjorie Head Garrick. Need linebacker, says Kyle Eddy, yes. Mark Douglas says, I suspect Landon Rodgers will be looked at hard to return to quarterback, possibly. That's a, that's a good point to make. They really like him as a tight end, as his future there. But that's, it may just be out of necessity. 
Kevin Norman says rumors of Andrew Parkin transferring. Yep, I've seen those rumors too. If Bump leaves, we will be thin on experience at linebacker. And again, there's another situation. Like I'm not, I haven't, I don't have any like inside information. I've heard the rumors that everybody else has. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that's popping up. I used to never talk about this kind of stuff, but nowadays it's kind of like you have to because it's such a big news story. Everybody in the country, like people. Somebody on Drive Time told me to man, to be a man, stop worrying about 18-year-olds. Like, this is literally what everyone in college sports is talking about right now, and it's also what we talk about and why that dude is listening. The hypocrisy of people sometimes. Rumors of Andrew Parker transferring a bump leaves. We Like, we look at that and say, okay, there's a great opportunity for Andrew Parker. Arkansas just lost two linebackers, maybe three. There's an opportunity for him to step up and start and play a lot more. They may not be how Andrew Parker views it. You know, you don't know his situation, you know. But this all could be just a bunch of BS. Julia Wood says, this morning I promised I would bake bumper a pie every month for the rest of my life. He <laughs> stay, And he responded to my son, who's his frat brother. Okay, bet. I feel pretty good about this. All right, that's the inside information we want on this show. Douglas Hodges says, don't we still have John Stephen? John Stephen was an underclassman. He has graduated. He walked on senior day. He was recognized, to say, on senior day. Um, as an underclassman, usually when that happens, that's just, you know, they're moving on. Okay. Um, so. Um, I think she p- tweeted that that was a rumor. I did see that tweet from her. I think she tweeted that that was maybe going around. I don't, I don't know exactly how she phrased that. I don't want to put words in her mouth. But I, I did see something from her on Andrew Parker as a possibility. Maybe Bobby Bones will pick up KJ. Yeah, I think he mentioned something about doing something, right? Great idea. Guatney, Walmart, and Tyson need to as well. Do you think we will have 85, uh, 85 man? I mean, it'll be close. It's going to work out, people. I mean, it's not going to be – it's going to work out. And they may not have 85 exactly, but they'll get pretty close. And here's the deal, too. You know, if there are scholarships on the roster – or, there, excuse me, there are walk-ons on the roster who are eligible for a scholarship. Now the rule has changed also with that, where it used to be two years you had to be on campus, now just one year. You'd be on campus one year, and you're eligible to go on scholarship and not count against any recruiting class, whether it's the past or the future recruiting class. Okay, you just count against the 85 total. So that's something else to keep in mind. And there's probably players on this roster that are deserving a scholarship. I'm not sure if, like, Nathan Perotti is planning on coming back or not. I've kind of heard that maybe that was – Sam Pittman meant that. He's maybe a retroactive scholarship, but I've kind of heard that maybe he, he might be uh, hanging him up too. I don't know that 100%, but I just kind of heard that. Uh, if a player enters the portal, can they change their mind, stay at Arkansas? Possibly. I mean, Jalen St. John did that, so it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I don't know that it's going to happen in these cases, okay? Sam didn't recruit a 2022 quarterback. So they did recruit, just to be uh, clear, uh, some Malik leaving must have been a surprise. I'm sure it was on some level, but not totally. But um, just to be clear, they did recruit 2022 quarterbacks. It just got to a point where they really didn't like their options so much, if that makes sense, okay? Uh, They had a young sophomore quarterback who was their starter and maybe just didn't appeal at the level that they thought. And they were still recruiting off losing records, you know, keep that in mind. They're still recruiting off losing. And people weren't quite sure. Like, everything they've done is based on hope until now. Now they have proof, okay? Is Levi Draper still with us? No, he's out. I think he's out of eligibility, but I think he's, he, he did hang up the cleats also. He went Actually, he went on medical hardship, which means – I think he could still uh, – he may have eligibility, so I think he could still go play somewhere, but he can't play at Arkansas anymore. He's on scholarship, but he's it's a medical hardship. Dustin Hooven says, non-Arkansas related, do you think they'll make changes to targeting this year like not an autumn? I think they'll do something. I, I hope that they do something with that, and I hope they do something with players faking injuries. Shout out Ole Miss. My 13-year-old son is a beast DB. Let Sam know, Trey. All right, Brian Stubbs. Brian Stubbs. <laughs> Alan Hurst says, are there are these players not even talking about Sam before they announce entering the portal? Well, I mean, I know that uh, Chad Morris told me one time that sometimes he would just get on social media on Twitter and see that a player transferred. So they don't have to talk to the coach. So I'm sure it's happened in some places in some regards, but um, – I mean, I, I think, you know, every, all these guys are going to have exit interviews. I'm not sure when they do those. I'm not sure when the next time we're going to even talk to Sam Pittman. But anyway, I hope some of this stuff clears some of this stuff up. This isn't, like, meant to, like, calm people down or anything. This is the world we live in. Welcome to college football 2022. 
it's a roller coaster straight to crazy town as I opened the show saying. And uh, that's just where we are. I do think that regulation is needed. I don't know how to do that exactly and make it fair. I don't know how you put stuff back in the bottle. But I do know that fans don't seem to like it unless it's happening to other teams or unless it, it's good news on their end. And, again, that's just, that's just the kind of dance we're doing right now. There's some give and there's some take. You're going to lose some guys that you didn't think should have left on the surface, and you're going to get some guys that uh, are going to make you feel better. Better days are ahead and some bad days are too. My favorite line from Vanilla Sky, aside from tech support, was uh, without the sour, the sweet ain't as sweet. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Sign up at hogsports.com. It's just $1 right now for your first month. It's a good time to join. There's a lot of stuff going on, obviously. And um, we'll be back with you guys soon. I'm not sure when we'll do the day the show. I haven't ever done it really on a Friday, but I just felt like there was a need to do it. Today is Friday, right? Days run together. All right, everybody. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. We'll catch you next time. 